So good afternoon, everybody. Before we start with the class for this week, I would love to hear if you have any questions about week one. I think the only open question I have, um, kind of about week one, kind of about week two, is for the course project for this week two, you said if we watched the these sessions or attended five of the eight, I think it was, um, yeah. maybe it was six, we don't have to do the, the course project. How, how will that be tracked? Do we have to worry about that? I mean, because obviously the due date is by the end of this week, so how do we keep track of if we attended all of them? Sure, that's a great question. Thank you very much for asking. Now, um, if you attend five lectures, uh, or if you watch the recording too, I mean, either way, either if you attend the lecture, or you watch the recording, uh, you will not need to do part A. You will get 100% in part A of the course project. Now, if you access the recording from the Vry with X, I will get the list of all students who participated. Okay. Yes, so if you are accessing the Vry with X for, to join the lecture or to watch the recording, do not worry because I will be able to see that. But for students who access it from the link, I ask them that they can email me because you can access the recording either from the Vry with X or from the link. So for students who access the recording from the link, they can email me in week five. Okay. Yeah, and uh, but for those of you who attend every week here, please do not worry because I have the list uh, with your name. Okay. Excellent. Now this is for part A. Uh, part B and C, we need to do them. Okay. And what I mean by part C is the final exam. So uh, part B, we will cover this in week five. And the final exam or the final project, there's no exam in this class. The final exam is the project. We will discuss this in weeks uh, six and seven. Okay, great. Excellent. Thank you for asking. Any other questions? All right. So now we will go over week two. Topics. Uh, first, I would like to go to the course resources. Uh, as you know, in this area, in the course resources, I will find my Excel sheet. So I will download the sheet for week two. So now we are for week two chapter, uh, discrete probability distribution. So I'm going to open this one. I like always to save it. I will save this on the desktop. And uh, then I will go to the homework. It looks like this, the sheet. And then I'm going to go to the homework. I'm going to go to week two homework. So in this week, we will discuss uh, probability. So um, my plan for today is to, say, to solve selected a question from this homework. So first, uh, anybody would like to ask any questions or would you like me to do uh, on my own? What do you prefer? I don't have any questions at this moment. I'd prefer we just jump in and, and start going through the problems. Great, we'll do that. Okay, so question one, they are asking if the occurrence or non-occurrence of one event doesn't affect the occurrence or non-occurrence of another event, what do we call these? By the way, does everybody see my screen? Yes, I can see yes. your screen, Professor. Excellent, excellent, thank you. Now, this is called independent. 
So if one event doesn't affect the occurrence of another event, this is called independence. So they do not depend on each other. And you see this in the daily life of prob prob probability. So for example, if you uh, toss a coin, uh, if you flip a coin and you toss a dice, so you know the coin, we, ha we have a head and tail in the, in the coin, and for the dice, we have six faces for the dice. Okay? So now these two are independent. There's no relationship between them. So for example, if you flip a coin and it is a head, this doesn't mean that when you uh, toss the dice, or if you flip the coin again, you will get a head or tail. So this is called independent, independent, independent. Is that fine? Yes. Yes. Great. And now the, the second definition that we have here, in, a, in any statistical experiment, the occurrence of one event precludes the occurrence of the other event. The events of this experiment are called what? Now, this is an example about mutually exclusive events. So, uh, think about uh, a playing card. Let us say a playing card. And let us say we have red cards. Okay. And uh, we have black cards in the playing cards. Now, the red cards and the black card are mutually exclusive because you cannot find a red card and black in the same time. So this is an example about mutually exclusive events. But I'm going to give you an example about events that are not mutually exclusive. For example, if you look at the, um, at the red card and the aces. So think about red card and aces. In the, this is an example about not mutually exclusive because you can have two aces who are red, right? Correct. Yes, so because we have aces and are red in the same time, this is called uh, not mutually exclusive. But think about, like uh, for another example, uh, can you get an ace and a king in the same time? from a set of playing cards, we cannot get an ace and a king in the same time because it's going to be either ace or king. We cannot, get, we cannot get a 10 and a 7 in the same time. So these are examples about mutually exclusive events. Okay? Yes. Thank you. And this is another example about what we did. Uh, so we have a single roll of a six-faced die. If the outcome three shows up, this is event A. And the outcome four shows up, this is event B. Now, A and B are mutually exclusive. Why? Because they cannot happen in the same time. We cannot have a face of a die that's both four and three in the same time. So this confirms what we uh, talked about in the previous course. This is mutually exclusive event. Okay. Now, in this question, we have 50% of all technical assistants would like to have a PC. 80% would like to have a Mac. 45 of all technical assistants would like to have both. If a technical assistant is randomly selected, what is the probability that you would like to, uh, to have a PC or a Mac? So for this example, I would like to open an Excel sheet. And here we will be using the uh, addition of probability, uh, addition rule of probability. So now this is the formula of the addition rule. So it's given by P of A or B is P of A plus probability of B minus probability of A 
and B. You see, this is the formula here for the or probability. Or also we call it union. I will put this side to side and then I will solve this. So A here in this case will be to have a PC. B will be to have a Mac probabilities. Okay. So the first probability is 80%. So this will be equal to 80% that's 80% like that, but you can divide by 100 and that will give you 0.8 plus. The probability to get actually uh, the, the first one to have a PC is 50%, so that's 0.5. You see it's given in the first part, 50% for technical assistant would like to have a PC. That's 50% 0.5. would like to get a Mac. So now here I'm going to add 0.8 minus from the formula, as you see. Now 45%, they would like to have both. So this is minus 0.45. I will just leave this here and then I'm going to do the math. So now the answer will be 0 0.5 plus 0 0.8 minus 0 0.45, and that will give us 0 0.85, which is the answer. This is an example about the addition rule of probability. Also, we call it the OR rule. The rule for or in a probability. Any questions about it? I think the confusing part for me is it says 50% of all technical would like to have the PC. Yes. And 80% of all technical would like to have the Mac, but that's more than all of them. Uh, that's now, think about them as, as separate. Like 50% of all the technical assistants uh, would like to have uh, a PC. Or, or only a PC in this case. Okay. Now, 80% would like to have a Mac. But out of these, we have also who would like to have both. You see that? Yes. Yeah, think about it as uh, you would, uh, for example, you will ask the staff or the assistants, uh, do you like to have a PC? Do you like to have a Mac? Do you like to have both? Oh, okay. Yes. So it's so okay that my total is more than one in exactly. this case. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So we have uh, lab uh, technical assistants who, who would like to have both. All right. Yes. Excellent. Yeah, I struggled on that as well. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of weird. I'm like, wait a minute. We've been taught all along it's supposed to add up yeah. to one. <laughs> well, having having the discussion this week where everybody can post a question, um, the the individual who posted this question, I was like, oh, it makes sense now because I was able to go through it with her, and and see how the formula was applied. So, because yeah, I couldn't wrap my head around that either. <laughs> okay, yeah, that makes me feel better. It's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, girl, no worries. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. That's great. I'm glad that uh, we found the discussion area useful. That's why what I did for this week, I asked the students that they can post the homework questions and we can discuss it. This way, if there's something difficult, uh, we can solve it there. Okay. So, uh, is everything good with this question now? Yes. Yes. Oh, excellent, excellent. I'm going to go to the next question. Now, in this question, we have 3 by 4, and this means 3 rows, 1, 2, 3, by 4, which means 4 columns, 1, 2, 3, 4, contingency table. This is called contingency table, when you have rows and columns and you have numbers inside. Now, A, B, C, D, and then you have X, Y, Z. 
uh, we have 1400 companies and they are summarized in terms of the industry type we have three types xyz and the locations we have four locations a b c d all right so now the question is asking what is the probability of selecting companies that are from location B, that's what you mean B, from location B, or from industry type Y. So this here, this notation means union or or. So you see that the, this U, U here, this U means union. And this is the same as or. So for, for this question, we're going to use the same formula. But here, because they have B for the location and Y for the type, I will change this one. So I can write the formula now. The first one will be a B, and the second one will be the Y. The first one will be the B, and the second one will be the Y the same thing here and sometimes my students think about it as the probability of uh, a or b is the probability of the first plus probability of the second minus probability of both so is that fine with this formula now yeah Thank you. So now for B, the answer will be 118 divided by the total. Now the total is um, is given in the beginning 1400. See, this is the total is 1400. So now here we will have this. We will have 118 divided by 1400. This is the probability of B plus why for why actually no you know what we need to do here we need to add the b so you see that what we need to do we need to add the b so to add the b we need to add all of these three so first let's do probability of b by itself so i'm going to have this in parentheses so it's going to be 110 plus 106 plus 118 you see we added all these numbers in the b and we divide them by the total which is a 1400 so now this will give us now a 0.24 and now i'm going to do the probability of the y so for the y i'm going to add these now so now probability of the y this will be i'm going to add i'm going to put them in parentheses 130 for the y plus 106 plus 122 plus 112 you see that we add these numbers and then i'm going to divide this by 1400 Now I will just do the math to show you the answer. So this gives us here uh, 0 0.34. All right. Now I want to find probability of B and Y. Who can look at the table now? And tell me what is the number that represents the probability for both B and Y? It's 106. 106, thank you. Do you see that, everybody? Do you see that? Yeah, I do. Thank you. Yes, so 106. Now, this is the number for both B and Y. So now the probability will be 106 divided by what now? 
1400. 1400, excellent, excellent, thank you. So this is the answer now. That's 0 0.08. And then we're going to plug the numbers in this formula here. So now here you we will have uh, 0 0.24 plus 0 0.34 minus, remember the last one we have minus 0 0.08. So now this this will be the answer and that's 0 0.5 yes now you see now if you remember we talked about this before now because this is with rounding so if you move this more Yeah, you know what, this is the exact answer, by the way, 0.5 is the exact answer. Now, why this answer is not exactly uh, accurate? Because if, they took, if you took 0.239 plus 0.336 plus 0.757, for example, maybe you end up with something like this. See that? So 0.4986 is approximately 0.5. But if you round in the beginning here, if you do some rounding, then you will end up with 0 0.4986. Yeah. All right, that makes sense. Yes. So yeah, the, uh, now that when, when they put this answer in this question, they did some rounding in the beginning here. But for me, I use the exact numbers because Excel will give you here the exact numbers. So even if you extend this here, it still, it, the answer is 0.50000. And this is the closer, as you see. All right. Any questions about this one? No, that looks good. Excellent, excellent. So now we can move to the next question. If two events, event A with probability P A, and event B with a probability B of B are independent. Now, when they are independent, there's a formula for this, and this is the probability of A and B. This is of P of A times P of B. Now, we can have, uh, we can see this formula in the lesson or in the uh, PowerPoint presentation or the textbook in this class. But for the uh, uh, for the independent uh, for the independent, this is the formula that is going to be the first one times the second one. You can also find more information about it in the textbook. Okay. Should we go now to question seven? Yes. So question seven. We have this table, gender, female, male, ICU and surgical units. We have 10, 12, 7, and 19. ICU is, uh, means intensive care unit. And we have Uh, this summarizes the number of participants, study participants in this table. So the question is, given that a um, person is a female, what is the probability that she's from ICU? Now, for this one here, I need to give you the, the conditional formula. Probability of A given B is probability of A and B divided by probability of B. So this is here the probability for A given B. Also we call it the conditional probability formula. C 
of A given B equals P of A and B given divided by P of B. So you see now, this is here given the female. What's the probability that she's from ICU? So now we can translate this as this. P of ICU given that a person is a female. You see that now ICU first here, given that. Now, you see from the question, given the person is a female, see that? So, according to this formula here, this will equal to P. Now, to make it easy, easier, let's just make it just ACU given a female. We will have it like this. This will be, according to this formula, This would be P of ICU and female divided by what? Yeah, who can tell me divide by what now? Divided by the probability of being female. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, as you see from the formula, you always divide by the one after the B. I mean, after the word given. So this is divided by P of female. So this will be ICU and female. How many numbers we have for ICU and, and female? That are both. Yes. Just one ten. number. Ten. 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 Yes. So now this will be ten. Now here, they didn't give me the total number, right? Which is okay. Okay. Uh, now, if you want to find the total number, you can add them, but we don't need that here. See, if you add them, so how many females we have? Ten and seventeen. So I'll, I'll do the math. So we have uh, seventeen. And how many male we have? We have 12 plus 19. See, this is 31 male. And we have 17 female. So the total is 48. If you add this. And also, if you add them this way, like how many ICU we have? We have 10 plus 12. That's 22 ICU. And how many surgical units we have? We have plus 7 plus 19. You see that you, get the, you, uh, you still uh, get the same answer. Yes. yes. So it is uh, 48. So what I'll do here right now, I'm going to do 10 divided by 48. This will be P of ICU and female. I'm going to put this in parentheses. Or I thought it should be 10 over 17, Professor. Because if it's just female, it would be 17, not the uh, whole group with male yeah, and female. Yeah, totally. I understand uh, your question that, uh, that it should be divided by 17. But see, what we are doing here, we are dividing this number by the total. OK. Yes. I mean, I, I see your point that maybe you divide by the 17. But if you divide by the 17, this will be probability of ICU uh, and female for only the female participants. Correct. I thought that's what the question was asking, for female yes. only. Yeah. So, but what we did right now, uh, let, let me specify this more maybe. What I did here, I just found this. P of IC and, and, and female, only, only, only this part. He hasn't uh, taken okay. into account the given part yet. Okay, okay. I, I see what you're doing now. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it took me a minute. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, so I'm trying, you know, you know, maybe it's my mistake. I'm trying that to write it in detail right now. Uh, so right now here, if I do that probability of a female, that now will be what? Will be seven. How many female we have? 17 females. Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much. So now this will be 17 divided by 48. See that? Now, because we have 48 in either one, the 48 will be canceled, and then it can be 10 over 17. Yes, you see, now, it, uh, because 48 will cancel, then it will be 10 over 17. Okay. But now, look, if we, even if we do the math now, see, now here, this is here, 10 divided by 48, and this is here, will be 17 divided by 48. So now, when you do... Uh, this uh, this number this number divided by this number. So now this is the answer now here. If you do this number divided by this number, you will get the same as ten over seventeen. And then I'm gonna show you this right now here. Um, if you if we do now ten divided by seventeen. That also will be 0.58. Is that fine? Yes, thank yes. you, Professor. Yeah. So now, for simplicity, what you can do here for these questions, you can just take the 10, divide by the 17 right away, if you like. But if you want to see it in detail, that's how we solve it in detail. We found, we found P of ICU and female divided by P of female. ICU and female, we have 10 divided by the total. Uh, female, we have 10 plus 17 divided by the total. And then you divide them by each other and you get 10 over 17. But I agree with you. The final answer will be, as you mentioned, 10 divided by 17. Thank you. All right, any questions about this question, seven? Any students, let me know if you have any questions about it. Nope, I'm all set. Yep, I'm good too, Professor, thank you. Wonderful, thank you. So now I will move to the next question. Now, this line here means given, by the way. And for simplicity now, for this question, I will not use the total. Now here they are giving the total as 1,400, right? And they want in this question, P of B given Y. Again, this vertical line that you have here, it means given. Now, here, I'm going to teach you another way to solve this question. So first, I want you to tell me how many Y's we have. How many students in the Y? Or um, how many companies in the Y? I will do the math. For, uh, Double for check. The... I think it's 470. 470. Thank you. Yes, that's right. So here, let me just uh, do this one here. For y, summation of y, okay, I'm going to add the 130 plus 106 uh, plus 122 plus 112. And as you mentioned, this is uh, 370. So now, this is what you will do here. First, you will find how many in y, and that's 370. Now, you put the answer here under this. Now, out of the 370 that we have here, how many belongs to B? Yeah, so of this line, how many belongs to B? 106. Is it 370 or 470? I think it's... Oh, one, one, one second, let me check. Yeah, it should be 470. 
Oh, the one is up to 30 there at sorry. the beginning. I am sorry for that. I apologize. Yes. Yeah, it's 470. Thank you so much. Okay. So now here, this will be 470. I appreciate. Now, how many of B out of these in the Y, how many belongs to B? 106. Yeah, so now it's going to be 106 here. You see, the final answer now would be 106 divided by 470. And that will be 0.23. But if we move this one here, you'll get the exact number, 0.2255. See that? So now, when you have a question like this, my recommendation is that first you will look at the number after the line or after the word given. You will add them. And that's what we did in this case. We added the Y. And put this under in the division. And then you will see how many billions to be, and that's 106. So the answer will be 106 divided by the total of the Y. Okay, any questions about this one? No. Excellent. Now, the first time you, uh, you, you, you solve questions like this, maybe you will feel that they are different, but the more questions that you will solve, the more you will familiarize yourself with these questions. Okay? Now, question nine. So there is a 30% chance that the, the economy will be good next year, and a 70% chance that it will be bad. If the economy is good, there is 60% chance of a bull market, and 30% chance of a normal market, and a 10% chance of a bear market, if the economy is bad, there's a 15% uh, chance of a bull market, 30% chance of a normal market, and a 50% chance of a beer market. What is the probability of having a good company and a, a bull market? So now they're asking for a good company, a good economy, and a bull market. Any ideas? What do you think? How can we solve a question like this? I would, <clears throat> I would probably put that into a chart like the other ones were, just so I could keep it straight. Yes, so let us. Uh, we can do that. Oops. And then it would just be similar to one of the other problems we've done. Uh, yes, but here you have the word and. Yes, you see, we, we, we have... Oh, uh, yeah, I see that. Yes, exactly. Well, the word and. So, a good, uh, a good economy. So, let us think about the word good economy. So, that, that's 30 percent. You see that? The 30 percent that would be a good economy in the, um, next year, right? So, a good economy... I'm going to write P of a good economy, that is uh, 0.3. You see that, everybody? You see that? Yes. Do you agree with me? Yes. Excellent. So some of them, they can be confusing because there are too many sentences. Now, uh, a bull market. Uh, now, there's a 70% chance that it will be bad. If the economy is good, there's 60% chance of a bull market, right? So, P of a bull market, given it's good, you see that now? This is the premium is good, there's 60% chance of a bull market. So, this is 0.6. You agree with me, everybody here? I mean, this can be a confusing the first time when we look at that. 
I'm, I'm following along, Professor. This is one of the questions I had difficulty on, so I'm just kind of yes. listening to the process. Okay. So this is 3.6. Is that fine? So what yes. I did, I translated this into formula. Now I will uh, review my, my old formula here. I will just copy it and then This is the original formula. P of A given B is P of A and B divided by uh, P of B. For uh, in other words, it's the probability of A and B divided by probability of B. You see that? So here in this in this case, what's given for us is the point six. This is equal to an unknown divided by probability of B which is 0.3. I'm going to call this one x here, like that. Is that fine? Yeah. Please let me know if it's not if it's confusing. Please let me know. I know it's uh, not an easy question. No, it looks good. Hmm? So now this part is the unknown, the one, the x. You see that? This is the unknown. We don't know it. So what we uh, now in this case look think think about this uh, equation here that I'm going to give you uh, two equals uh, eighteen divided by nine you see that just an example in this case the eighteen will be what will be the two times the nine you see that yeah this number here will be the multiplication of this number and this number. It's just an example. So now, what does that mean? That the x now will be the 0 0.6 times the 0 0.3. So that will be 0 0.6 times 0 0.3, and that's 0 0.28. Uh, would you like me to go over this one again, one more time? I mean, I know it can be confusing. I will just, um, yes, anybody would like, would you like me to go over it again? I'm okay with it. I'm okay as well, Professor. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Yeah, so remember for this one, we use the, the conditional probability rule. Because they ask for the and, you multiply the given probability with the B, B probability. In this case, the, the, the B is the good. And the A and B is uh, both given good. Okay. Now question ten. Question ten is similar. So let's do number ten. So first, the first thing I will do in this question, I look at the uh, last part. What is the probability that the economy is good? See now, this is what they're asking for. Given that, it is normal. You see that? Given that. So I want to translate this into formula. So what they, uh, what they want us to do is to find P of good given normal. I will just type it like that so that it's easy to see. So what's P of good given normal? So according to the formula now, this will be probability of good and normal divided by probability of normal. It is in the same format as the formula, like that, you see? First given second yeah. is the first and the second divided by probability of the second. Yes. Now this is the hard part, where you will formulate the sentence into a formula, as you see. You look good, given a normal. Sometimes they write it backward, like that. Oh, 
Hello. Hello. Uh, Hello, how are you doing, Professor? I- I'm doing well, thank you. Did you need my name for attendance? I don't know how, how does it go. No, that's go? okay. That's okay. If you attend the session, I will have the list already. Don't worry about that. Okay. Yeah, so any student who look into the session or attend the recording, I will get the list from all the students. Okay, I can attend this. I can take my lunch during this time. Of course, absolutely. Yeah. Don't drive. drive because I hear a car. Don't drive and listen to my session. Yes, sir. Yeah, I want I want everybody to see to 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 be safe. You know, safety is the most important thing. If you are driving, please do not drive. You cannot drive and use your cell phone or a laptop. So if you are driving. Uh, you don't have to drive, just you can attend the recording later. The most important thing is the safety. How are you? Are you sure? Yes. So in this okay, question, so. Uh, first I want to see what is good and normal. So this is 30% chance the economy will be good next year, and 70% chance that it will be bad. Say that one more time. I'm sorry? Repeat what you just said. I'm I'm reading the question from uh, the homework. Do Do you see it? Okay, I'm I'm gonna have to do the recorded then since I'm driving. You're right. No, no, yeah, yeah, again, please do not drive. Yeah, yeah, please do the recording. I mean, because I care about your safety. I understand. So I I I look online for the recorded session, and then if I have questions, I can email you. Absolutely, absolutely, yes, of course. Okay. Yes. yes. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry about your time. No, that's okay. I will give you points for attendance. Don't worry about that. Yeah, just the important thing is your safety. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Oh, bye-bye. Have a good day. So here now we'll continue with this question. Uh, the economy is good. There's 60% chance of a bull market. A 30% chance of a normal market. If the economy is good, there's 60% chance of a bull market and 30% chance uh, of a normal market. So now here they say, given that it's normal, so here I see that they give the answer for us. The 30% chance of a normal market, given that it's a good economy. But here they are asking for good given normal. So probability of normal So they answered the question themselves. Yes, uh, thirty percent. Yes, so here we have the thirty percent. Thirty percent. If the economy is bad, the fifty percent chance for market, thirty percent for normal market, and fifty percent chance of a bear market. So for this question here, a probability of good given normal, it is at thirty percent point three. And also we can do it like this way: good and normal divided by P of normal. Yes, so even even from this part, also they're saying that the thirty percent chance that the economy will be good uh, next year. So it is written here in a, in the opposite way, but P of normal given good. See now this is this was given in this part here. This is quantity. So 
So now uh, P, this is P of normal given good. Now this point three here is equal to uh, P of normal given good. So I'm gonna leave this as X divided by uh, P of good. Which is um, a point C. So from here, that will give me a probability of uh, one. Now P of normal. So, you know, I, I think in this question, that's what they mean here, by the way. I, I, see, there's a mistake in this part. I think that they mean that this is what they want. P of good given uh, normal. Yeah, see, like, see this fifty percent chance. This is a normal given good. So this is what they are looking for in this question here, a normal given good, and the answer will be point three. So now this uh, should be changed here to this part. Uh, do, do you see that, everybody? I do. Yes. So this question should be written that, given that the economy is good, what is the probability it's a normal market? And then now the answer would be from here, 30 percent. Yes. So now please uh, do it this way. And if you get a mistake in this question, just email me, and I'll give everybody full credit in this one. Okay. So if it doesn't answer right in your homework, just email me, and I'll add the point for you. All right, thank you. Yes, thank you. So I will uh, contact the uh, uh, course show administrator to report the issue with this part. Okay, now question 11. In a sample of 10 students randomly selected from your class, the height, is it continuous or discrete? Now, for this question here, I want you to remember that discrete means that you need to have whole numbers. For example, number of students, number of computers, number of laptops, number of trees. So when you have whole number, that will be discrete. But when you have fractions like height, weight, uh, volume, time, in this case, we can have fractions. And this means that we'll have continuous. So height of student, you can have uh, 5 feet and 5.5, uh, 6.2, uh, 4.7. So you see, you can have fractions and decimals. So that means that it's a continuous. Let, let me give you an example. Uh, how about number of cities? Number of cities, is it uh, continuous or discrete? That would be discrete. Yes, thank you, because you cannot have a city and a half. Like number of students, number of teams. Yeah, but now when you have fractions, that will be continuous, as we have in this case. So the answer is a continuous. Now, the average time for students spent on reading per day. Now, again, think about the time that you can have hours and parts of an hour, parts of a minute. So this is continuous. It's not like number of students where you have whole numbers or number of computers. So that would be an example about a continuous uh, random variable. Is that fine? Yes. Yeah, so the time is continuous. All of the time will, will be continuous. So ask yourself a question. 
if the number can be fraction, in this case, that would be continuous. Like amount of milk, amount of gasoline, amount of gasoline that if you fill gas in your car, uh, of course, maybe you can have like five gallons, but also you can have five and a quarter, 5.2, 5.3. So the amount of gasoline that you put in your car, that's a continuous. Whereas number of cars is a discrete because number of cars will give you whole number. All right, so now we will move to the uh, next question. So here we have this distribution, 0 0.15. So x is the random variable and p is the probability. What is the mean of the distribution? Now, for question 13, well, I'm going to use the Excel sheet that we have. It is the Excel sheet. So I'm going to enter the numbers in the green and get the answers in the yellow. So x now would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the p, I'm going to enter the numbers, 0 0.15, 0 0.25. Now here, one condition, when you add all the probabilities in the same experiment, the answer should be one. So you can always look at this to make sure that you didn't do any mistakes. When you add all the P's, all the probabilities, the answer uh, will be one. I was trying to increase the size, but not to see me. Okay. So as you see, we have the x's here and we have the p. Here. Now here you can uh, obtain the three answers: the mean, the the variance, 1.49, and the standard deviation, uh, deviation which is 1.22. You see now the mean is 1.9. So any questions about this uh, question? No. Excellent, excellent. I'm glad to hear that. We have more participants. I'm excited to see all of you, and I'm really happy that you are joining the session. Excellent. So now we will move to the following question, number 14. Uh, Joe throws a die four times. What is the probability of him getting a number one at most? one now in this case we have a die now uh, the, the die has six faces you can have one two three four five and six now in this experiment the outcome that you are looking for is to get a number one So we will throw the experiment uh, four times. We will throw the die four times, do the experiment four times, and then we will observe getting number one. Now, this is an example about a binomial probability. Let me explain to you a little bit about binomial probability. So in the binomial probability, the outcome will be either yes or no. True or false? Like in this case, getting number one or not getting number one. See that? Either getting number one or not getting number one. So this is an example about binomial probability. Another example, uh, we have customers in front of the store and we are looking if they make uh, a customer uh, made a purchase or didn't, didn't make a purchase. You see, make a purchase, didn't make a purchase. Yes or no? So this example is about binomial. So for the binomial, I'm going to look at the binomial sheet that we have here. See that? We have binomial table and we have binomial sheet.
So to use the sheet, first we need to know what is the probability of getting number one in the die. Remember everybody that the die has six faces. So what is the probability of getting number one in the die? Who can answer the question? Six faces and we need to get only number one. It would be one divided by six? Yes, thank you very much. It will be one divided by six. So here I'm going to put one divided by six, like that. Okay. Now, and how many times you are repeating the experiment? You see, Joe throws the die four times, so it, now it will be four. Okay. Now, X here, they are uh, asking at most once. So that another answer would be one. You see how I put the numbers and how many times we are repeating the experiment? A P is the probability of the event. Probability of the event is one divided by six because you have six faces. And X, uh, we have one because they are asking about one. And finally now, to answer the questions, I want to remind you, at most one. Now, at most means less than or equal to one. Think about it. If I say that I have at most one dollar, I have at most one dollar, it means I have one dollar or less. Do you agree with me? Yes. Thank you. And also, the at least means more than or equal. For example, if I say that I have at least one dollar, it means I have one dollar or more. So at least means more or equal. At most means less or equal. So now this is here, this means at most. Less or equal. And that would be that the answer for this one is 0.8681. Any questions about this one? I know this is the first time we're doing this. Anybody, please uh, feel free to ask, please, about this one. No, I'm good. Oh, great. Excellent. So this is an example about a binomial uh, probability. All right. So now I want to use the sheet again, so I'm going to re uh, delete my numbers. So now what is the mean of a binomial distribution in which the number of trials, number of experiments is 100, so here I'm going to put 100. The probability of success is 0 0.5. Here I'm going to put 0 0.5. They didn't ask about other things. So now the answer, this will give you the mean the variance, and the sign deviation. Now, if you want to do this yourself, this is what you will do. You will do 100 times 0.5. But you don't have to because the sheet here will give you the answer. So if you do 100 times 0.5, that's 50. See that? 100 times 0.5, that will give you the mean. So here you have the mean, and then you have the variance, and then you have the standard deviation. So the mean is 50. Is that good? I think so, yeah. Great. Now, in this example 16, a dealer in a casino has rolled a six on a single die four times in a row. What is the probability of his rolling another six on the next roll, assuming it's a fair die. So in this example, uh, we have a die, and that has six faces, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six. And uh, the question is, what is the probability of his rolling another six on the next roll? And assuming if it's a fair die. 
Now, for this question, ladies and gentlemen, think about it like that, that this is uh, a bite. Now, if the dealer gets number five or number six or number four now, do you think this will affect the following one? Yes or no? No. Yes, you're right. No. So the answer, it will still, it will still be one divided by six. See that? It doesn't matter if he or she rolled a six on a single die four times, or 50 times, or 100 times. Of getting a six on the next one, it's, it's independent of the previous one, right? Independent. Correct. It will still, it will still be 0.16667, uh, or as you see, just one divided by six. Because we're trying to get number six, and we have six faces, one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that good? Yes. Excellent. Now, in this question, the expected number of defectors uh, in a sample of 200 units taken predicted from the output of a machine that has a 0.5% defective rate is. All right. So for this question, the defective rate is 0.5%. You see that? So this is here the defective yes. rate. Now, in this, we have 200 units in the sample. So now the answer will be 200 times 0.5 percent. And see, that will give you one. Yeah, so basically what we did, we multiplied the percentage, see that, with the numbers that we have. Another example, we have 50 students in the class. 0.5%, uh, they, oh, I'm sorry. 0.5%, they are um, basketball uh, player. 0.5%. In this case, the answer will be 0.5% times the 50. Just simple multiplication. Is that good? That's good, Professor. Thank you. Great. So now we're going to move to the following question. Number 19. One fair coin is tossed 10 times. What's the probability of getting exactly three heads out of 10 tossing experiments? Now, this is an example about binomial. Why is that? Because you are tossing the, uh, the coin 10 times, so this means that n will be 10. And now the question here, to get a probability of a head, remember, you have a head and a tail. 50% head, 50% tail. So the probability of a head is 1 over 2. So I'm going to write down equal 1 divided by 2. And they want to get exactly 3. Exactly 3. Not more, not less. So here we have a 3. And you see this is the answer. A probability that getting exactly 3 hits is 0 0.117. And that's the answer. Ten times probability and x is a 3. Questions about this one? No, I like it when it lines up with that spreadsheet really nicely. It makes it easier. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that because you remember, uh, or m maybe uh, uh, you know, uh, I really believe that using the Excel sheet will simplify the calculations. I, I talked about this in the um, uh, previous uh, class in the lecture that the, the sheets are important because here we are not about doing the calculations. Now, if you do the calculations, you can do it. There's a formula. There's a table. But right. A table. Ta uh, many years ago, many years ago, when I was teaching this, uh, I used to use table. Now we use the Excel sheet, and Excel is really, really very convenient for us. All right? 
Yes. Yes. So now we're going to go to another question 19. Now look here, they, they, they say use the appendix. But we will not do that. We can uh, use them here in this sheet. So for example, part A. So N is 20. So I'm going to put 20. Uh, P is 0.6. So we have 0.6. And X is 13, so we have 13. Now we see now here, this is for equal 13. The answer is this. So part A. Now let me move to part uh, B. So we have 24 N. I'm sorry, 25 for N. Uh, P is 0.2. And X is 20. So here now this will be 20. And they want it for more than 20. So I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to make it this one. More than 20, it is zero. As you see. So here you can use the Excel sheet that we have to enter the information. No need to use the table. See now, many years ago I was using the table. Now we can use the sheet. Is that good so far? Yes. All right, and now we have the last question. According to the American Medical Association, about 36% of all U.S. physicians under the age of 35 are women. Your company has just hired eight physicians under the age of 35, and none is a woman. If a group of women physicians under the age of 35 want to sue your company for discriminatory hiring practices, would they have a strong case? based on the number. Use the binomial distribution. All right, so now we're going to use the binomial. This is the binomial here. We have the tables here. We don't need it. We're going to use the binomial. OK, so how many physicians our company or the company in this question hired? We have eight. So I'm going to have eight. Now, uh, in this question here, this is what the, uh, the outcome is the candidate for the job a man or a woman see that that's what they're asking so here the probability is one over two Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, actually. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for that. Uh, I, I apologize. Now, the probability here is given because this P actually based on previous research. So according to, to this uh, research, 36% uh, of the physicians are women. So if you look, now if they are asking about the probability, um, I'm sorry, this is something different. They are asking about the probability of the physicians to be a woman. See that? And this number is given in the past, based on this data from this journal for the American Medical Association. So now this here would be 0.36. Uh, so now n is 8. See that? And P is 0.36. N is 8 because our company hired 8 women. Eight uh, physicians. But look, our company hired 8 physicians and none is a woman. None of them. So in this experiment, when you have 8 who are not women, Okay. And with this probability, in this case, random hiring probability will be the 0 0.028. See that? Now, in this solution here, they, they use that table. We, we, will not, we will not use this table here. Because this, what you have in this formula here is the same answer that you get here. 
the point point zero two eight uh, point zero two eight. Now look, 0 0.028 is very small probability. So 0 0.028, this is the same as the 2.8 percent, which is very small probability. So in this question, it's unlikely that the company would randomly hire eight physicians and one of them would be a female. So if this happened, this will be support will support the lawsuit. You see that? So because the probability is really very, very small, it's unlikely that the company would randomly hire eight and none of them will, would be a female. Because based on previous data, 36% of the physicians under age 35 are women. So now we got here a very, very small number, the 0 0.028. Now, you see, like, if you go back to this formula here, see that? Even if you don't enter the zero here, see? The system will calculate assuming that this value here is zero. Means that we are looking for the random uh, hiring probability. So here the answer is 0 0.028. And yes, it's a very small uh, probability. Okay, so any questions about uh, the last question, number 20? No questions, Professor. Thank you. Any questions from any student? Thank you all so much for joining. I really appreciate that. You can join from the phone, from a laptop. OK, so now we mentioned that one question uh, I will add points. You remember that question that we solved earlier? If you have a mistake with that question, let me know, and I will uh, add the point. I think it was number, trying to go there. Yeah, number 10. So number 10, if you answer this question and you get a mistake, uh, please let me know and I will add full point for this question. You remember there is a mistake in this one. It should be uh, P normal given good. It should be uh, the other way. Yeah, so if you answer this question and you get a mistake, please let me know and I'll, I will add the point. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the session, everybody. I am sorry that today uh, we went over uh, time. Uh, please remember that you can email me. You have my phone number, you have my email, and I will be happy to help you if you have any questions. What, what, something funny about my phone number, that my phone number is 312-857-8281. And this will be translated to uh, 312-85-1. And believe me, this happened by chance. Yeah, so if you dial 312-85-1, that will be my cell phone. And again, this happened by chance. I never planned for it. So I get the word stat in my phone number by chance. Okay, so have a great day, everybody, and please email me or call me if you need anything. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. And also my email in the, in the shell also, I'll just, I'll just write it down just in case, yes.
Okay. Have a great day now, and please remember to contact me if you need anything. Bye-bye now.